welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 152nd episode of The Simple Sophisticate. Today, we're going to talk about dreams and in relationship to making them a reality. But before I get to that topic and dive into it, today's petit plaisir is a book you will devour. It is a memoir. It involves food. It involves France. And a beautiful voice tells a story that will just be engaging whenever you need to pick up a good, thoughtful read. But I won't give any more away about that particular book. You'll have to stay tuned to the end of today's episode. Let's get into today's topic, Dream First, Then Plan. I want to begin with a quote which inspired today's episode from transcendentalist Henry David Thoreau. He states, if you have built castles in the air... Your work need not be lost. That is where they should be. Now, put the foundations under them. Hmm. To dream big, to dream beyond others' imagination is a risk. However, to dream so vastly is to reveal one's capacity for hope of what could possibly become reality. Do you remember what you dreamt about as a child? In particular, your daydreams when the sky seemed to be truly the limit. Do you remember why you dreamt what you did? More often than not, what we dreamt about had more to do with what we thought we would feel, how we presumed our way of life would be, and thus the contentment or fulfillment we would reach. The exciting news I want to share with you today is that the sky still is the limit. Even as we step into adulthood, our dreams are a roadmap of where we really truly want to go, of what we are passionate about. The important part that we must consciously engage ourselves in is the dissecting of the dreams that refuse to be forgotten. In other words, look closely at your dreams from childhood. In some form, which ones are you still dreaming about? Maybe as a child you dreamt of traveling the world, partaking in safaris and scaling Mount Rushmore. Examine now what is dancing through your daydreams. Is it the same thing or is it adventures, but perhaps more tame or more unique to who you are as an adult? Look less at the specific destination itself and instead at how you conjectured it would make you feel when you had the opportunity to travel to parts unknown. Perhaps it was the freedom you wanted to always have in your life. Or maybe it was the comfort of nature surrounding you. If you have the courage to investigate why you dream about what you dream, what you dare to dream about, in other words, you will find a roadmap to your truest contentment. Along the way, as you unearth the truth, you may discover a need to become better skilled in certain arenas, and so you do just that. As you continue to proceed, you are aware of what, while being low on your priority list, is impeding your progress, so you understand why you must let some things go that no longer align with your truest path. The gift of dreaming big and having the courage to pursue what you've imagined is that what we focus on in which pursuits we deposit our energy, we help to manifest and eventually nurture into reality. Ponder this quote from Robert G. Allen. The future you see is the future you get. While it may seem impossible as you gaze at your dream from afar, having only just begun or having so much farther to go, the good news is so long as you stay focused, perhaps journal regularly, check your sub goals weekly or monthly, you will gradually come closer to what you wish for. Why? Because you are no longer wishing you are doing. And with each step, with each task completed and each exercise of willpower to say no to what might jeopardize or get in the way, you are inching closer toward making it your reality. Christopher Reeve states, at first dreams seem impossible, then improbable, and eventually inevitable. 
Upon moving to Bend, an amazing dream became a reality, calling Bend my hometown, something I honestly had doubts along the way would ever come true, living, calling this place home, this mountain, nature-loving, small-town feel with a big city undercurrent. But I never gave up doing what I could to put myself in the best position to give it the potential it needed to materialize. Now that I have lived here for almost two years, a few of my other dreams have seemingly been stalled while others have blossomed beyond my expectation. And as I consider the latter of those two realities, I am reminded that never giving up completely is always the best idea. Sometimes we have to put dreams in the back burner. We're not turning that back burner off. The oven, the stovetop, it's still going. It's just at a low heat. And we just maybe will keep working toward them habitually. But what is needed is letting go of the expectation of when they may come to be what we hope they might be. And as we do this, we're still making progress toward that particular goal but we're letting go of the pressure that we put on ourselves. We're recognizing that maybe we really don't have all the control. We don't. We all know that consciously. But so long as we control what we are able, when the right opportunity presents itself, we will be able to seize the moment. In moments of doubt, when I am not sure if my dream is even a possibility anymore, I find myself shaking my head. When a step back or a regression of progress appears to be taking place, I want to kick myself and then more doubt is piled on. But then I wonder, what would life be if we didn't have dreams to pursue? Dreams are a form of curiosity of wondering, can I do this? Am I up to the task? Am I capable? The reassuring answer is you are absolutely capable. And along the way, some pretty amazing moments could happen as well that might open even more unexpectedly splendid doors for you. And those temporary setbacks that may give you pause, give you doubt, they're going to happen. First, look at why they occurred. And often what you will find is that you were living life and balancing as you moved forward to navigate what you had to navigate. Simply because you had to take a step back doesn't mean your progress toward your dream is dashed. It simply means you have to reroute or refuel earlier than expected. But you can do that, no? Because if it is a dream you are ardently passionate about, you will refuel, you will reboot, and you will figure out a way to reach your goal. Here's another quote to ponder from Nikita Koloff. Capture your dreams and your life becomes full. Imagine the story your life is writing right now. Imagine the anecdotes you are collecting along the way to be appreciated once again upon reflection. View your life as a story. Make the choices that will make the reader smile. And since it is a story, accept that there will be moments you do not want or expect. But if you are the savvy writer that I know you are capable of being, you will figure out a way to write a happy ending. So dream big and let your dreams guide you along your magnificent journey of life. If you would like to stop by the show notes, I've shared a few extra posts from the archives that are on the similar topic of dreams and working toward them and making them a reality. Visit the show notes at the simply luxurious life.com backslash podcast 152 and hang on because we still have a petite place here that I think you're going to enjoy. I'll be right back. All right, this week's Petite Plaisir is a book that has been around for over 10 years. And a book, even if you haven't read it, perhaps you know a lot of the contents. Because if you've seen Julia and Julia, produced and directed by Nora Ephron, starring Meryl Streep and Stanley Tucci as Julia and Paul Child, you have read a part of this book. <laughs> My Life in France, written by Julia Child with her grandnephew, Alex Prudhomme was published in 2006. Now you may recall that Julia Child died in 2004 on August 13th, just two days before her 92nd birthday. But it was with great excitement that she sat down and wrote this book, who she dedicates to her husband, Paul. It is her voice that enlivens these pages. It is her voice 
that is full of sincere excitement and curiosity and a love and a zest for life and for food and for cookbookery that makes you want the book never to end. This book is inspired by the letters that she and Paul wrote to their friends and family. And it is, as the title says, about their life in France, which began in 1948 when they first arrived. Now, her husband, Paul, had visited Paris and France before in the 1920s, but this was Julia's first time, and she becomes smitten, as we know. I want to read for you a quick passage, and I think what you'll hear, hopefully, is why I and so many other people have loved this book. By the end of November, I was shocked to realize that I'd already been at the Cordon Bleu for seven weeks. I had been having such fun that it had whizzed by in what felt like a matter of days. By this point, I could whip up a pretty good pie crust and was able to make a whole pizza from a mound of dry flour to hot out of the oven pie in 30 minutes flat. But the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know, and I felt I had just gotten my foot in the door. What a tragedy it would have been had I stuck to my original six-week plan. I'd have learned practically nothing at all. It gave me a great sense of accomplishment to have learned exactly how to cook such a savory dish. And she's speaking here about roasted veal. And to be able to replicate it exactly the way I liked every time without having to consult a book or think too much. There's another quote I wanted to share that I highlighted. And I just had a smile and I've referred back to it many times. But as we see in the film, she falls in love with cooking and food and cookbooks. I don't think it comes to light how much she loved the process of writing a cookbook, but she really, really does fall in love with that process. She writes in one simple sentence on page 148, if you have the paperback copy, now that I had started writing, I found cookbookery such fulfilling work that I intended to keep it up for years and years. There's something about hearing in this case in written form, when someone discovers their passion, a passion that hadn't been discovered yet, but was waiting for the individual to do the homework, to do the investigating, to find out. And that's what this book really opens up. It definitely is reminding me that I want to go watch Julia and Julia again, but at the same time, this book is so much more. It's so much richer. And obviously a filmmaker can't put all these little details into a film. The film would last for days but it's a definitely a great companion, the film, to this book. And it'll make you fall in love with Julia Child all the more. You can check out the link to My Life in France by Julia Child on the blog, the show notes, the simplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 152. And as I mentioned a couple weeks ago, this is a book I've been enjoying for my evening leisure read because it is relaxing. It's pleasurable. At the same time, you learn a lot. Did you know that she went to the Cannes Film Festival? Yep, she did. She covers that as well. There's so many little tidbits we just don't know about Julia Child if we haven't read the books. So I encourage you to do that. My Life in France by Julia Child. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast, where I'll recommend a book, a film, or a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pick up the book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's Guide. To stay caught up on the most recent podcasts, blog posts, and receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or your morning coffee, just in time to jumpstart the weekend. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bon genie!